Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Mally Rosado, and I am the Council President for the Court of Common Council for the City of Hartford, and I'm calling to order this committee of the whole meeting of August 16, 2021. And I have to say that I'm really looking forward for uh, the appointment of Interim Chief Barco. As I see on the screen, I'm going to name uh, my council colleagues that are with us this evening. And that is Councilman Sanchez, Councilwoman Shirley Surgeon, Councilwoman Marilyn Rossetti, Councilman John Gale, our Majority Leader, Councilman TJ Clark. Uh, we also have our attorney, which I saw him, Howard Rifkin, uh, Hartford Public Access uh, TV and some members of our public, which I am going to ask they remain uh, in mute status uh, for this uh, appointment uh, throughout the meeting, please. For some, um, can, can you hear me? For some housekeeping, um, we do have uh, the appointment of uh, Chief Barco uh, this evening. There will be no questions addressed to the council body uh, or to Chief Barco uh, throughout the process of uh, this committee of the whole meeting. Uh, for members of the community, uh, please be advised that this meeting is being broadcasted and recorded by Hartford Public Access Television and can be viewed via Hartford Public Access TV uh, Facebook page, Compact's Xfinity Channel 96, www.hpatv.org or channel 6032 for Frontier customers. Spanish interpretation is provided through a partnership with the City of Hartford and the Hartford Public Library. Additional off, uh, accommodations can be made available uh, through my office when requested in writing. With that said, I am going to uh, read our agenda item today is the appointment of our interim chief uh, Barco to Hartford Fire Chief. And I am going to read the appointment letter that was sent to the mayor uh, to council. A task for your current consideration is a resolution confirming the appointment of interim chief Rodney Barco to the position of chief of the Hartford Fire Department. As you know, Chief Barco has served as acting director since Chief Freeman became chief of the fire department in Oakland in California on April in April. Chief Barco is a long is a long is a lifelong Hartford resident who graduated for, from A1 Prince Technical High School before serving in the United States Marine Corps. He joined the Hartford Fire Department in 1995 before being, in 1995 before being promoted to Lieutenant in 2010 and Captain in 2016. He was appointed Assistant Chief in 2018. And as you all know, um, he was appointed to Interim Fire Chief um, this year. In his 25 years as a Hartford firefighter, he's earned the trust and respect of the department, especially as a leader in the department over the last decade. I am confident that under his leadership, the Hartford Fire Department will continue to be one of the very best in the nation. Thank you for your consideration, respectfully, uh, Mayor Luke Bronin. And now I'm gonna read the resolution introduced by Mayor Bronin to the Court of Common Council, uh, City of Hartford dated August 9th, 2021, whereas the mayor, Luke Bronin, has nominated interim Chief Barco for the position of Chief of the Hartford Fire Department, now therefore be it, and the resolve clause that the Court of Common Council hereby confirms the appointment of Chief, of interim Chief Barco to the position of Chief for the Hartford Fire Department, effective upon the date of confirmation. And I have to say that I'm very excited today. And before I turn uh, the floor over to interim uh, Chief Barco for his opening statement to council, 
once he's done with that, I will open it up to my council colleagues for questions. I have to say that I'm very excited about this appointment because here we have um, a man who uh, served our country in the Marine Corps. Thank you, Chief Barco, for your service, who has gone through the ranks in the fire department um, and is now uh, going through the process of being nominated uh, fire chief. Uh, Chief, it's an honor uh, to have met you and, and, and work with you on a daily day uh, basis. Um, with that said, I am opening up the floor so that you can address this council body with your opening statement. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, uh, President Council Rosado. Um, I definitely appreciate the nomination and the trust that Mayor Bronin has in me, and I thank you all for letting me speak before the council this evening. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce my uh, team that I have with, with me here tonight. As you can see, I have Assistant Chief Riley, uh, Chief of Support Staff, uh, Superintendent Madden in charge of the Equipment Maintenance Division. At the end down there, you see uh, Chief Erickson, he's in charge of our training division. And over here, you have, uh, our Fire Marshal Chief Sharif, and at the end, our uh, st Strategic Manning, Manning Planner, uh, uh, Leo Siri. He's a, he does a lot of our uh, a lot of our R and D uh, and special research as it pertains to radios, computers, uh, firehouse alerting, things of that nature. Um, again, I, I want to thank the council for having me on this evening. Uh, my name is Rodney Barkle. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of the city. And I wanted to let you all know that this appointment to fire chief uh, means more to me than just having the title. Um, it's not one of those things that uh, for me in particular is, is something you put on your resume. Uh, I've served the city for my entire adult life the majority of it, and I've come to love the things that I do. Um, I grew up in the city. I went to school in the city. Uh, I've been afforded so many opportunities because of this city. And, and now that I'm in a position to give back as a whole, um, that's something I'm willing to do and that's something I wanna do. Um, the men and women that I've served on this department with honor, integrity, dedication to duty, you know, it's been a great experience and I want to continue that effort. Um, I want to do it for my friends, my family, all my colleagues who, who all reside in the city and the visitors alike. This is a wonderful, diverse city that we live in. Um, and I want to continue to serve it as best I can. I know that uh, there will be some challenges, and in the last three years as uh, Assistant Chief of Ops, I've met those challenges on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's going to a fire in the middle of the night, uh, EMS, or, or technical rescue in another town, or serving as the incident commander for Capital Region Hazmat when we respond throughout the entire state. Uh, those are some of the things that I enjoy doing. Um, I enjoy conflict resolution. You know, I learned those skills in the military when dealing with other soldiers. It, it's a very intense and difficult process when you're teaching a young 18, 19 year old person how to uh, prepare, arm, and and get ready demolitions and, and munition of military grade. That That's something that is, you, you have to have that instilled in you. Um, and it carried over into the to fire service for me. So I'm honored to continue to serve. I, I've been serving. Um, I, I love this city. I love this department, everything about it. Uh, I spent my entire career from the most important position, I think, in terms of uh, advancement is district chief uh, aide. 
And in that serving in that position in itself, you get to see the department operationally as a whole. You get to learn from different deputy chiefs and chiefs um, that, that make that jump to that position. And you take certain things from them, the experiences that they have and what they teach you. And you parlay that on to the next position as a lieutenant. And when you become a lieutenant, you have men and women under your command, right? So those things you learn along the way as you start to advance in rank. And then when you become captain, you take on more responsibility, whether it's in charge of the entire house or in charge of two apparatuses or even being incident command. Those are some of the things that um, we do on a daily basis. And uh, I've never shied away from a challenge. And it, anyone that knows this department from 20 years ago to now, we, we've gone through a lot of changes and there were a lot of challenges back then. And we're finally in a place where we can make the rest of the world stand up and look at us. And that's what we've been doing. And that's what I wanna to continue to do. And so with the opportunity um, that's granted to me and with the council's blessing, I would, I would love to continue to serve. Thank you. Thank you um, for your remarks, um, Chief Barco. Um, hello to all your staff who's there with you. Um, it hello. is eight o'clock. Hello. Hello. hello, everybody. Thank you for um, being there with the chief. And so now um, I am going to, actually before I open it up to uh, my councils for questions, uh, before the meeting went live, Councilman Sanchez had asked you about the stripes that you have in your uniform. Um, and I would like for you to give us a little uh, lecture here on, on, on those stripes before I open it up to uh, our council colleagues. Yes, ma'am. The four stripes here represents your rank which is, this is still assistant chief, so I need one more stripe. And then the hash marks represent the years of service, which is, as you can see, it's 20 years, but I need another stripe to give me over 25 years. And also you can get a red hash mark, which uh, denotes that you served in the military. Wonderful. So I'm, I'm pretty humble with, uh, and fiscally responsible and not spending the city's money. So that's why I still have, <laughs> the same uniform I have when I came on. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful to hear. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna open up the floor to uh, my council colleagues for questions or comments. Majority Leader Clark, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President um, and Chief Barco. Um, I, I, I thank you for your service. Uh, it is an honor to actually uh, be working with you. Uh, uh, since I've been on council, I've found you to be a very knowledgeable uh, person within the fire department, and I would say very humble um, at, at, at most, uh, which I do applaud, uh, because I don't think I've ever seen you up there. Uh, but <laughs> um, but uh, the people that I've spoken with since uh, I've been on council have always spoke highly of you, and uh, I, I tell you, uh, you're so humble, I didn't even recognize, I didn't even know uh, of your um, of all of your uh, qualifications and certifications until I read uh, I reviewed your resume and I would say that you are highly uh, respected amongst the colleagues that I have spoken to uh, and a highly decorated uh, firefighter and I think that you know we should applaud your service and also too uh, you are somebody that many uh, young men uh, and uh, women. Uh, but particularly young men, uh, young boys in our city can actually look up to uh, to see themselves in you, uh, as you are a, 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 you resemble uh, you resemble Hartford, and uh, and also too with how you have uh, you know served your country and then came back home uh, to uh, to become a firefighter to take on that brave responsibility of protecting, going from protecting our country uh, to protecting our city. And I think what speaks volumes uh, of your credentials and why the mayor um, has uh, did appoint you. And I did note to the mayor, I was very surprised that he appointed you so quickly uh, because most department heads that we have um, seen have had a longer uh, tenure as a uh, either interim or acting de department head uh, than, than you have. And so I think that actually speaks to your character and your credibility 
uh, in your, abil your, your ability to manage uh, the men and women <clears throat> in our Hartford Fire Department. And so uh, thank, you for, thank you for your service. I do look forward to working with you. Uh, and one question I, that I have is, uh, what have you seen uh, since your time as um, a fire, as a, from a firefighter going all the way up now to assistant chief uh, that ha has been a turning point in your, uh, in your career and how would you actually uh, take the fire department from this level to the next level under your leadership? Well, thank you, Councilman Clark, and, and, and that's a great question. Uh, for me, what I've seen is the evolution of the department, right? From everything from the services rendered to the technology that we use now. I can remember back when I was at Ladder 6 and the first thermal imaging camera we had was in the form of a helmet and it weighed about 25 pounds. And if you were assigned to the roof, you were, you was responsible for that. Now, our thermal imaging cameras is something that you hang on your coat, uh, almost the size of, you know, an older cell phone. But in, in terms of technology, we have gone a long way um, with detecting poisonous gases to being able to find individuals in an IDLH and smoke-filled environment. The training has excelled as well. Um, our heavy rescue unit is one of the best in the country, and they have all of the rescue technician disciplines from trench rescue to machinery and vehicle rescue, confined space, um, rope rescue, and the only two that there that there are remaining is swift water and building collapse. And <clears throat> to speak to the second half of your question, those are some of the uh, rescue technician courses that I'm seeking to pursue, working with uh, leadership and MMB to secure those fundings because it is a very expensive class. But not only that, to improve uh, the level of services that we give to the community. Uh, when I go out to the firehouses, I ask individuals, what can we do to assist you in better doing your job? And whatever I can provide for the firefighters out in the field will improve the level of service that we give to the citizens. So my goal moving forward is to um, improve the level of services for our community and our visitors alike and then also um, increase the level of training for the men and women out in the field. Thank you, uh, Chief, for that explanation. And one thing I wanted to know too, I do respect the fact of uh, as far as your level of service, coming in as a firefighter um, and staying the course and working your way up through the ranks to become what you are now. I think that is, the, that is highly commendable and a lot of people need to take note of your, of your service. Uh, the second thing, and I'll, I will conclude with this, um, regarding the uh, class one um, designation of the Harvard Fire Department, what is that going to take to, uh, to remain as a class one uh, designation? Yes, sir. So our ISO class one designation, it, it consists of uh, four categories. One is the fire department, Two is communications, three is our water supply, and then community risk reduction. And you receive a certain amount of points for each category. So um, as long as we maintain the level of service, our water supply is our water supply. It's, it's unparalleled when we look at our surrounding towns. We have a tremendous water supply, so we, we won't have to worry about losing points in that. We just need to maintain the level of service as far as the fire department. And since we're accredited, um, we can look at what we're doing and what we need to do to improve or maintain a high level. So that wouldn't be a problem. And our community risk reduction, as you all know, is, is off the charts. We hit about 116,000 homes in 2019. And then 2020 has slowed down, but we're picking it back up. So we, we constantly work each and every day to maintain our class one designation. And we have our strategic man, uh, Leo Theory down there. He uh, maintains uh, our accreditation and our ISO rating as well. Thank you for that. Thank you, uh, Councilman Clark. Councilman Sanchez. 
Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. So, um, you know, TJ uh, basically uh, asked the questions that I was interested to hear, but there is one question I'd like to um, learn more about is uh, the fire cadets. Um, I know that um, there's a, a difference between the fire cadets and the police um, cadets um, as far as where the uh, benefits are, as far as the pay, and as far as the training. Um, when you... Um, what are your decisions or what is your um, thoughts about improving that as far as the fire cadets and their experience? So our fire, today, we're, we're uh, slotted for six cadets. And um, the, the issues that we have, the differences between our cadets and the police cadets is police cadets are full time. Our cadets are mainly part time, 20 hours a week and they have to maintain uh, college courses and still have a job. So it, it's a little difficult for them to do that uh, on a steady basis. What I would like to see is um, somehow getting our cadets to a, a full-time status so that they don't have to have a job and go to school and do fire cadet training. So the 20 hours a week, helps them tremendously when we're trying to prepare them for the academy. It's just the rest of life's little issues that they have to deal with that makes it difficult for them to maintain it. So every now and then you'll have a cadet uh, drop out because of those issues that they have maintaining a job and paying bills and living on their own and still trying to be a cadet. But I think uh, it'd go a long way if we could get them full time. Right, I, I agree. And then now, is, is this um, program a part of union negotiations or is that is this with the city? Because I never, uh, I don't remember ever being involved in, in, in uh, agreements uh, when it comes to cadets. As a um, no, sir, it's not, a, it's not a, a union program. So what improvements can the council um, assist you in? Well, sir, if we if we can get together, draw up a draft, and work around getting them a full time position, but still maintain the educational status, I think that would help a long way, go a long way. All right, and that was the the only question because uh, uh, Councilman Majority Leader Clark had asked the other questions. Now, um, but moving forward, I do have a statement. I'm extremely proud to be one of the council members here supporting you and seeing you to um, the uh, top number one position in the HFD. Um, I'm also a Marine. I understand, uh, you know, what, what you're uh, talking about. Um, I appreciate your service. Uh, I, I will say that everyone I have spoken to, and I mean literally everyone, uh, supports you. Your firefighters, your 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 team, they highly respect you. Uh, the community highly respects you, and those who've been around you and met you and and, and had conversations with you had nothing um, nothing but great things to say about you. So I'm very proud to be uh, one of the voting members here um, to see you move upward and and support us and serve as the city. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Semper Fi. Number five. Thank you, Councilman Sanchez. Councilwoman Rossetti. Hello, Interim Chief Barco. How are you? Good, ma'am. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I, I also just have a statement. I really, it really is um, something that I love to see when someone is promoted from within. I think that's so important, not only in uh, city of Hartford and other institutions, and I wish that happened more. I wish that was recognized. I wish people were recognized for service. I wish people were recognized more for experience. Certainly, people who go on to earn higher educations, kudos to them, but I also give people kudos for putting the time in and the effort and uh, having an exemplary, exemplary work life. So I thank you. And I, I thank you as a lifelong resident and um, congratulations. Early. Thank you. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you, Councilwoman Rossetti. Councilwoman Surgeon, followed by Councilman Gale. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Council President. Um, Chief Marco, congratulations on uh, the mayor recommending you uh, to be our uh, fire chief in the city of Hartford. I sit here tonight with tears in my eyes because I think you remember the former fire chief, John B. Stewart. Yes, ma'am. One of the things he always aimed at within the fire department is our young people in the city of Hartford working on behalf of their community, either police or fire. And you certainly exemplify what he tried to start out doing um, over 40, 50 years ago, where he wanted uh, young men like yourself who have begun uh, at the beginning of being a firefighter. He wanted us to make sure we can bring you out into the community and take her youth, whether they are black or brown, and said, this is what success looked like. So you certainly exemplify that. So thank you very much for wanting to continue to serve the city. Uh, thank you for serving the city uh, in the military and continuing your service. Um, my question is um, regarding the, um, the class one designation of the fire department. What is your vision um, to keep that designation and what is it that um, your goals are uh, to continue it and how can we uh, you know, make the city of Hartford Fire Department, you know, better than class one, if there's a, something bigger than class one, I have no clue. But what would you do to continue that and for the next um, step that the city of Hartford can take under your leadership? Yes, ma'am. Well, just to let you know, we are bigger than class one because we're a class one and accredited. So we've, we stepped, oh, okay. we've, we've stepped our game up quite sufficiently, but um, to your point, I, I think the communication to uh, the communities and the public about exactly what our class one designation rating gets us, and that's lower insurance premiums. And we do that through our community risk reduction and special services unit. Um, so it, that, that helps us in twofold. It, it helps us, it helps the citizens save money and it helps us to inform them about fire prevention. Um, with, with our special services unit in our FMO's office, we're able to um, significantly spread that information around. And having buy-in from the department that participates in, the, um, in our, our accreditation process, they get to see exactly why we send four engines to a box or exactly why we have community risk reduction. Uh, the other thing we're doing is ISO is coming out with a new format that will be, uh, that the public will be able to look look at every day on a daily basis through a, a website and they can go on and see exactly what our rating is and how we maintain our rating. So uh, our goal moving forward is to be as transparent as possible and let the community and the citizens and residents know that this is what it takes to keep our city great and keep our fire department and municipal services operating at the highest level possible. Thank you. Just one other question um, through you, um, Madam Chair. And I think Councilman Sanchez really uh, started talking about it. And that's our youth, you know, um, that uh, we need to uh, use you as an example for them to get you know, to become cadets and realize that this is a success they can do if they stay within our city, uh, you know, and move up within the system. And then number two also is, um, uh, as you talked about um, fire reduction, our city, unfortunately, um, one of my issues is the education of our community to actually get fire insurance, uh, you know, because one of, um, we have a lot of rental units in our city Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, so how can you focus on that as the fire chief, uh, you know, with helping with educating our resident to know of all the fire prevention and to get fire insurance as an insurance um, should any disaster happen? 
Yes, ma'am. So, so currently when we have a fire in a particular neighborhood or residence, we do what we call uh, a blitz campaign after the incident. And we canvass uh, a two block radius wherever the fire occurred with literature about fire prevention. We replace uh, smoke detectors if needed, smoke detector batteries, and then we hand out insurance information. Uh, currently, we're looking at different uh, insurance agencies to partner with so we can do a presentation booth um, at certain venues that around the city and in different NRZ locations where we can have these individuals come out and speak to the community as to what it takes and how little it costs to actually get renter's insurance. Right, that's a great plan. Please let us know what we can do from the council side uh, to help you attain those goals. And again, congratulations. And thank you so very much for all your services uh, to the residents of our city. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Councilwoman Surgeon. Councilman Gale. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, good evening, uh, Chief Barco. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilman Gale. The, uh, you, you've already very clearly um, you've had to impress the two co-chairs of public safety <laughs> committee. So your toughest critics, I, I, I've heard their comments already and uh, obviously I'm deeply impressed. Uh, I will say just on a, on a very personal note, I uh, suffered a fire in my house in 2008. It was a rather substantial fire and uh, Hartford Fire responded and I was just amazed and I tell the story uh, to anyone who wants to listen uh, just how uh, impressed I was with the degree of coordination and the degree of mitigation uh, of losses so that uh, in, in my case, while one crew was up on the roof of my porch uh, fighting a fire on the second floor, another crew was down below them on the first floor removing furniture, uh, taking paintings off the walls, rolling up carpets, uh, and protecting against further damage from, uh, from the water that was coming in. And after it was all done, they came in, and as my friend Bob McNair says, they did a man cleanup, uh, you know, picked up some of the rough stuff in our bedroom uh, and, and took it away. Uh, so I was just left, you know, I mean, oh, as a lifelong Hartford guy and friends in the, in the fire department, I've always uh, been impressed with our fire department. And to Councilwoman Surgeon's point, I hung around with John Stewart for many, many years. Uh, and been impressed with John Stewart. But that firsthand experience as somebody needing the services of Hartford Fire in a big way was, was so impressive. Um, and I know that um, the, the department has strived since then to continue uh, that level of um, uh, service and even improve it well beyond that, I'm sure. So uh, thank you for everything that you've done. I look forward to working with you uh, in your new capacity um, and, uh, uh, good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman Gale. Are there any other questions or comments from my colleagues? Councilman Sanchez? Yes, I'd like to make a motion if you're ready uh, to hear it. I believe we are. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we send this resolution and approve and vote uh, positively, but of course we have to send it to council very favorably. Second. A uh, motion has been made and properly second. Are there any questions, any discussions? Any questions, any discussions? There being none, all in favor of sending the appointment of Chief Barco to council with a fair, favorable uh, recommendation signify by saying aye. 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 And that's <laughs> Even the go to first. <laughs> Hey, if you can't vote for yourself, who can? <laughs> <laughs> with that said, um, this uh, resolution is being sent to council with a favorable recommendation uh, for the appointment of interim chief Rodney Barco to chief of the higher of the Hartford 
uh, fire. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you to my colleagues and everyone um, who are with us um, via Facebook. Um, have a good evening. And again, congratulations, Chief. Congratulations. Thank you. So Thank you. Really That's my... Bye. Bye. Enjoy working with you all. Thank you. You're Take welcome. Care, sir. Take care.